Hi, and welcome to week one of warm-ups for French horn. My name is Libby, and today we're going to talk about what a good warm-up is and why we do them. So let's get started. The best way to think of a warm-up for me is to imagine it in the same way that an athlete would imagine a sport. You know, before we do any serious running or heavy lifting, you want to make sure you're warmed up, ready to go, so that you don't hurt anything or build any bad habits. So, that being said, one way that a lot of people like to think about warming up is to start with something slow and low. And this just means we should begin our warm-up with something that's kind of like a stretch for our face and for our mind to get things going, get our air support really there, and make sure we're doing everything the right way. So one good example, uh, an exercise that's a really good example of this principle, is exercise 7 um, on the Chop Buster sheet. It's always a great idea to start your practice session with long tones because they do exactly, they accomplish the exact purpose that we want. They, they help us warm up and set a really good tone, literally, for the rest of the day. Um, these particular exercises, this exercise is something called a Remington exercise, which a lot of brass players do. And the idea is that you start on the same note, in our case an F, and each time you go down by a half step until you get to that bottom C. This is just to keep our air support going, and we don't have to worry about any fingers or any crazy tonguing. The only thing we have to focus on is making a beautiful sound through each phrase. I'm going to play this exercise for you, and I am just going to breathe after each set of Remington. So before each new F, every two bars, I'm going to take a breath um, on beat four of the measure before, and you'll see what I mean. I'm going to put my metronome at 80 beats per minute to play these. And by playing through these, you sort of remind yourself of where each note is on your horn, but you're always returning to the same kind of home base, okay? So that's one example. I'm just going to go through each exercise so you know what they sound like. The next exercise that will set you up for a really good practice session is exercise four, which is our chromatic scale exercise, okay? Um, it's important to play our chromatic scale exercise because it helps you get your fingers warmed up and gets you kind of thinking, okay, about half steps. Um, for our purposes today, I'm going to start with the lower octave chromatic scale because we're still getting warmed up. You know, we're not all the way, not all the way ready to go. So if you don't feel like you're warmed up, you probably shouldn't go for all the high notes right away. You want to feel really secure and like you're doing everything the right way because you don't want to hurt yourself or form any bad habits to make high notes happen. So that being said, here's the lower octave uh, chromatic scale. Remember, we're working in half steps with our chromatic scale. One, two, ready. <laughs> just helps us getting our articulation warmed up ta, 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 ta. and making sure our air goes through every time we tongue our air needs to go through that and be behind it okay now once you get past to that bottom octave here's what the top octave sounds like just in case one two ready <laughs> So now that we worked on those chromatic scales, and remember, chromatic scales are really good to help us practice our articulation, ta, 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 get our air going through every note, get our tonguing to line up with our fingers, um, those types of exercises are really good for that purpose. You can also just do articulation exercises on your own, like 
just on one single note. Um, moving along, we're going to look at the exercises on the Unit 1 B-flat major page for French horn. And you'll notice there's a lot of really good instructions on this page, such as take a full breath, gulp the air, don't sip, use smooth, consistent air for consistent sound. That's exactly right. You want to always have steady air that's just going to support and make your sound really beautiful and singing. For this first exercise, we have long tones again, because remember, slow and low is really important when we warm up. I'm just going to demonstrate this long tone um, at 80 beats per minute, just to show you how it should sound and let you know what I would be listening for. <coughs> Awesome. So I was just trying to keep a steady, consistent sound, using my air to support and make sure through my long tone, my sound always sounds even. Like I'm not going what. You just want it to sound da. Remember, remember to support from your core when you play these. That'll make it easier to keep your air steady. Long tones B is pretty similar, um, just in different ranges. Any note that you can play, you can play a long tone on. So I'm going to skip over to long tone or to exercise C. Um, this five note scale, I'm just going to play this for you so you can hear what it sounds like. Metronome is on 80 beats per minute. <laughs> Good, and that exercise will also help you line up your articulation with your fingers. Make sure for each of these exercises that you read the instruction first because they're really good reminders of things you should be listening for and thinking about when you go through these little warm-ups. Okay, so that's all we're going to work on for today. Um, I hope you've learned something about what a good warm-up should consist of and have some ideas for warm-ups that you can add to your practice moving forward. And I'll see you guys next week.